Life goes on, and so do we. Just how we do it is no mystery. One by one, we fill the days. We find a thousand different ways. Sometimes the answer can be hard to find. That's something I will never be. I'm always here for anything that you need. Rain or shine, I'll be the one to share it all as life goes on. We share it all as life goes on. It says here this flu season is going to be the worst in 10 years. Yeah. Oh, that's terrible. Daddy, does this mean we'll be able to afford to build that pool house out back? Carol! Maybe a little one. <laughs> Did someone let Dreyfus out? No. I didn't. Hey, this isn't Dreyfus. <laughs> Good, Barbara. <laughs> Wait, come, Barbara brought me out to a strange dog. I don't know if we should be... <laughs> Beauty pie. His tags are missing. Oh. He's washed. Oh, he's washed. Daddy, we should make signs to put up around the neighborhood. Oh, don't you worry. We're going to take good care of you, Andy. Oh, Barbara, please. He looks nothing like an Andy. He's obviously a Joey. Why Joey? <laughs> it's short for Joseph because he looks just like Joseph Stalin. <laughs> See the little mustache? But we don't blame you for the thousands imprisoned in insane asylums. <laughs> He's got to be hungry. Yeah, well, Dreyfus didn't finish his goal. Yeah. Yeah. Eat all you want, little Joe. Oh, he's so cute. Oh, look, look, look. One little ear goes down, the other ear goes up. Oh, yeah. Would you want some more? Love you, Tracy. See ya. Come back to me healthy, please. Okay, Oliver, and any interesting calls? Well, little Corey Bradford called, wants to know if you'll speak to his fifth grade class. Ooh, that's pretty flattering. I guess they want to know what it's like to be a pediatrician. No, they're just looking for somebody that was alive during World War II. <laughs> hey, good looking. When you're through taking care of them Tylers, I know a full-grown man could use some nursing. Ooh, hi there. Oops. <laughs> Sorry, Dr. West, I didn't mean to sweet talk the wife in front of you. <laughs> How'd the game go last night? We won. Uh, and I had a great day. Got on base twice. Way to go, Nick. Got hit by two pitch balls. <laughs> Took one the shoulder, one the leg. Good eye. Sure could use some liniment, hon. I'll run next door to orthopedics. Get that kind you like. <laughs> oh. Doctor, I don't need that liniment. I just wanted to talk to you privately. That is, if you're not in the middle of some breakthrough medical research. <laughs> I couldn't wait. Come. What's on your mind? Well, I was hoping you'd meet me for lunch this afternoon. Here's your address. Got something real important to talk to you about. Is everything all right? Yeah, yeah. Just do me a favor. Don't breathe a word about this to Laverne. Right. Hey, you let him in, hon. Oh. What were you two talking about? <laughs> Nothing. Okay. Whew, you're smooth. <laughs> I would never come up with that nothing thing. <laughs> Hi, doctor. <laughs> Welcome to Stubby's. I got here really get us a tape. Well, great. That's good. Jeez. Place is packed. Always is. Yeah. Howdy, and welcome to Stubby's. I'm Mary Lay. Here's some chips and our special screaming chili dip. Dig in. All right. Y'all enjoy now. Thank you, dear. Thank you, Chef. Mmm. Mmm. Mm, good. Mm. Why do they call it screaming chili? <laughs> hey, that's good today, huh? <laughs> oh, 
this place has quite the history, too. Did you know that Stubby's was actually scouted as a possible location for the movie Urban Cowboy? You kidding? Legend has it. Director stood right over yonder, took a look around, and said, nope, this place is all wrong. Pretty impressive. <laughs> Nick, uh, I know you didn't bring me here just to clear out my sinuses. <laughs> There's something else on your mind. Man, you read me like a book. <laughs> Doctor, I've had three dreams of my life. Dream number one was to play big league baseball. And to that end, I've been playing in the minors for 18 years now. Now, dream number two has always been to own my own bar. Nothing fancy, just a place I can call my own. I don't expect to get rich, Doctor, but I would like to put aside enough so as me and Laverne can retire to a little piece of Todd family land back in Hickory. Oh, darn, I got going, spilled right over into dream number three. Well, Nick, they all sound like very worthwhile aspirations. I'm glad you see it that way, Doctor, because Stubby's ready to sail. Oh, you want to own this bar? <laughs> Unfortunately, I'm still about this far away from having the money I need to close the deal. No, not at all. Uh, Nick, if you're asking me to lend you the money, I can take care of this. Oh, oh, and one more thing. Can we keep this just between us? Laverne would be real uncomfortable if she knew I came to her boss for financial assistance. It's okay, just between you and me. So, it's a deal. Deal. Okay, Joey, do it one more time. Oh, he's great, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, Daddy, you gotta see Joey. He's so talented. Yeah, let me see what he can do. Right, okay, right. Go on, Barbara. Yeah. Oh, little drive. Did you see that? A dog who can dance. I think maybe that beats the time you yawned and got your mouth stuck open. <laughs> Can we keep him? No one's claimed him yet. Yeah, and he's so much fun. Uh, I don't know, girls. I don't know. I don't know. Well, maybe, maybe. We'll talk about it. And Joey, if you need me, I'll be at Nick's. It's opening night. <laughs> See you later. Hey, Barbara, let's go take pictures of Joey dancing, okay? Good idea. Glad you could make it to the grand opening. <laughs> Ain't this terrific? Do you believe what he's done to this place? Oh, don't pay attention to them. Some people just resist change. Well, what, what kind of changes have you made? Oh, nothing major. Anyway, welcome to... La Burks. <laughs> La Burks? Oh, I get it, I get it. It's kind of a combination of Laverne and Nick's. No, nope, just got a heck of a deal on the K. <laughs> Doctor, my dream is of a kinder, gentler bar. Family place. A bar you can bring a two-year-old, providing he's 21 or older. Uh, well, uh... <laughs> Nick, what happened to the cute little cowgirl waitresses? Case in point. Now, those girls were pretty. But when a man walks into the Burks, the only woman should be on his mind is his wife or his mama, which is why I brought in Agnes and Nana Felt. Such a face. Uh, Nick, are you sure you want all these changes right off the bat? I mean, Stubby's was a very popular place just the way it was. Well, that was Stubby's dream. This here's mine. Yeah, well, yeah, okay. Boy, this is the happiest night of my life. My dream is coming true, and I owe it all to my anonymous investor. If I ever find out who it was lent Nick that money, I'd be forever in his debt. I'd shower him with endless praise and adulation. <laughs> Nick, why don't you just kind of tell her who it was? <laughs> I've been bursting to anyway. It's Dr. Weston. Hey, it's almost eight. Just about time for the entertainment to begin. If you'll excuse me. So you're the anonymous investor? Yeah. That is the stupidest, most idiotic thing you have ever done. Was that the endless praise or the adulation? How could you set my husband up in business? He's a dreamer, not an entrepreneur. This place is bound to fail. Laverne, it's opening night. I think you're overreacting. Okay, everybody, you've all filled your bellies. Now it's time to have some fun. Okay, this side. 
Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Everybody, merrily, 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 merrily. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. And row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Morning, Laverne. Says who? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just really worried about Nick. I'm afraid of what's going to happen when his dream, Laverne, goes under. Not much business, huh? <sighs> well, Laverne, I really am very sorry. I didn't know it was that bad. I mean, I haven't been there since, you know, opening night. Yeah, you and the rest of Miami. <laughs> oh, Doctor, there's just so many things Nick could be good at. He could be a great coach or, or even a manager, but he's got this stupid dream in his head about running a bar. And I'm just afraid when that bar goes under, his spirit's going to die with it. Well, I'm not going to sit idly by and let that happen. i got to do something. I know. You talk to him. <laughs> Me? Well, why don't you talk to him? I'm his wife. His best friend in the world, his confidant. I can't talk to him. Laverne, well, I don't know what to say to him. Well, I don't care what you say or what you do. You just got to convince him to sell that bar before he loses his shirt and his self-respect. All right, all right, Laverne. I will do my very best. I will stop by right after office hours. Thank you. Be sure to wear blue or gray. It's come as your favorite Civil War general night. <laughs> yeah, I told you he's going under. <laughs> Howdy, Doctor. Hey, you forgot your Civil War duds. Really? Oh, well, don't feel bad. They forgot theirs, too. <laughs> uh, hey, Nick, uh, can we have a little talk? Oh, could you hold on a minute? I got a few more things to do around here since Nana Feldman up and quit. She quit? Well, you know, most of her salary's based on tips, and to quote her own words, she can't live on 15% of diddly. <laughs> Business is picking up. <laughs> hey, Harry. What's with the civvies? Chuck? Eddie's neighbor. Charlie, you come here? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this place, it's the best bar in town. Did I miss a sing-along? <laughs> hey! <laughs> Where's Nana Feldman? Oh, I'm afraid she quit. Well, I can't blame her. She was making diddly here. <laughs> here you go, General. Thanks. You know what I love about the Civil War? America won. <laughs> it was us against us. We couldn't lose that, baby. So, you wanted to talk? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I can't help but notice that this bar thing is not working out for you. What are you talking about? Nick, I mean, look, the place is practically empty. It's been like that ever since you took over. So I'm thinking, you know, maybe it's time to cut your losses. Get rid of the works. But it's my dream. Yeah, Nick, I mean, I, I, I know it's your dream, but, you know, maybe you're just not cut out to run a bar. With all due respect, Doctor, I have to take issue with you on that one. I do know how to run a bar. Well, if you'll excuse me for a moment, I see table number eight is out of gummy bears. <laughs> Darn. So how's it going? He's not very well here. I can't seem to get through to him. Well, the time for pussyfooting around is over. You have got to convince him to sell this bar. So, where were we? Oh, yeah, you were stomping on my dream. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, Nick, that's it. I mean, friendship aside, I'm also your creditor, and as such, I can demand repayment of the loan in full immediately. Now, if that means you have to sell the bar... Oh, oh I get it. You want your money back. I can see I've got no choice. Well, I mean, I am... Sorry, you're gonna have to sell the bar. No but... choice at all but to give the only thing I got of equitable value. The deed to a piece of family land in Hickory. <gasps> here you go, doctor. I've been keeping this deed here from the day I opened the Verks right by the cash register to remind me what I'm working for. Now it's yours, fair and square. Nick, I don't want your property. This is ridiculous. <gasps> now, baby, don't you worry. I'll buy back that property from the doctor just as soon as the Verks catches on real big. <gasps> <laughs> Nick, come on, you know, you know, this would be a whole lot easier all around if you would just please fold up your tent. Call it quits. Hey, you. Get off of my cloud. <laughs> all right, who's ever down here?
here, wherever you are. I have a black belt in karate. No, you don't. <laughs> That's right, Barbara. Let's be completely honest with Mr. Murderer. <laughs> Carol, look, the vase just fell over. What's, go what's going on? The vase broke. How did that happen? Well, there's popcorn on the table. It must have been Dreyfus. You know how he loves popcorn. He must have gone for it and knocked over the vase. Dreyfus, bad dog. Bad, bad dog. Shame on you, Dreyfus. Bad dog. Shame on you. Bad Shame. <laughs> hey, Harry. What are you doing here? I live here. <laughs> right. Well, I'm just surprised you're not over at Leverk's. It's their last night. What? Yeah, Nick's going out of business. Oh, no, he finally gave up. Poor Nick. Poor Nick? What about me? I already rented my lobster suit for deep sea night. <laughs> well, last night I'll be putting these chairs out. Nick, I'm sorry. Why, it ain't your fault. You didn't do nothing wrong. Except for marrying a big old loser. And don't say that, Nick. The smartest thing I ever did was marry you. You are not a loser. Them too. Can't even make one lousy dream come true. Stop it. Your dreams aren't lousy. They're wonderful. It's your judgment that's lousy. <laughs> I guess the doctor was right. Maybe I wasn't cut out to run a bar. Wasn't cut out to run a bar or play Major League Ball. Man, Vernie, one of these days, I sure hope to God I find out what I was cut out to do. Oh, hey, uh... Oh, hi, Doctor. Sorry for quoting the stones at you the other day. That's okay. I guess you heard about Leverk's going belly up. Can't say you didn't warn me, so go ahead and gloat. You got it coming. Nick, come on. You know I didn't come here to gloat. I came here because I care about the two of you, and I figured tonight you'd be feeling pretty low. You always could read me like a book. <laughs> Come on, what do you say? I give you two guys something to drink. <laughs> well, I appreciate a beer, huh? Ditto. Right, here we go here. I got a couple of beers. Right. Here we go. Oh, Nick, you know, you know, I realize your dream is dying here tonight. I know exactly how you feel. I should have known you would. Yep. <laughs> I've been there myself, you know. Well, you know, being a pediatrician wasn't my first dream. Really? No. In fact, if I told you what it was, you'd probably laugh so hard you'd fall right off that stool. Trust. I wanted to be a dancer. <laughs> so, it's all right. Yeah. Go ahead, laugh. No, I know. No, it's, it's a laughable idea now, but then, even though I had two left feet and no sense of rhythm at all, I wanted to be the next Fred Astaire. <laughs> and were you? <laughs> uh, uh, no, Nick. Oh, right. I kind of lost the thread of the story there for a while. Well, I see, uh, the important thing is, is that, is that dancing was my dream. But it was one of those dreams that only makes sense as a dream. And once I realized that and faced up to the fact it was never going to happen, then I was free, you know, to focus my life, my energy on, on other dreams, more attainable dreams. So that's when you got your dream about being a doctor. Exactly. So what you're saying is me running a successful bar was about as likely as you become the next Fred Astaire. Well, I mean, I, I, actually what I'm saying <laughs> is that in any one lifetime there's room for plenty of dreams. And if some of your dreams don't come true, you just go out and you find some more dreams. Well, he makes a lot of sense, Nick. Finally she agrees with me. <laughs> don't get used to it. <laughs> Now, Nick, you know your other dream? Huh? That retirement property back in Old Hickory? Hey. Ah, that's a dream you should never, ever give up. No, that's your property, Doctor. Nick, come on, you're going to sell the bar. When you sell a bar, just give me the money you owe me, and we're square. Thank you, Doctor. And don't worry, I'll pay you back. Nick, I am not worried. Man, Bernie, what could I have been thinking? A baseball player opening a bar filled with colorful people where everybody knows your name. <laughs> How likely was that to work out? <laughs> what now? Dreyfus, what is wrong with you? Dreyfus, you broke something else. This isn't like you. Maybe he's trying to tell us something like Lassie used to tell Timmy. <laughs> I know. Somebody's trapped in a cave. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, Barbara, I um, don't think so. <laughs> Dreyfus, you bad boy. I saw the signs you posted. I think you have my wife's dog. Oh, he came to oh. show. Oh. oh, yeah, that's him. We don't seem very happy to see your dog. Well, I guess it's because I hate him. <laughs> he breaks everything in the house. Come on, let's go. Come on, Satan. <laughs> All right. Oh, drive. Oh, Drive, how could we have blamed you for breaking all those things? Oh, Drive, we're so sorry. Drive. Oh, Drive, please don't be mad at us. <laughs> all right, Drive, I tell you what, we have learned our lesson. There will never, ever be another animal in this house except you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>